When I was a little boy, I often wondered about the origin of the universe. But I never wondered what I would do if the world was going to end. Later, at school, I learned that a thousand years ago, in the Middle Ages, people readily believed that the world was going to end because of a prophecy in the Bible. So they prayed because the threat was divine. But what if the threat is not divine? What if the threat comes from us? First, I couldn't believe it. I mean, we are intelligent, we are humans. We're just geniuses, we're clever. I mean, we invented cars, we produced smartphones, TV screens, we built cathedrals, we painted Mona Lisa, and we saved people from death with surgery. Look at this, and precisely, one day I was looking at this graph when my attention got caught by another graph, a similar one, which was actually exactly the same. So I thought, this is again about human intelligence. I was very pleased with that. But I focused on the title, and it was not written human intelligence. It was written, oh, total world carbon emissions. Is that greenhouse gas emissions? You know about carbon dioxide, this gas that's emit, in, emitted by human industrial activity, and that creates climate change, global warming, that is actually cooking our planet. So I asked myself, maybe this brain, our brain, is preparing our own doomsday, our own destruction, and that we don't know it. So I took a closer look at that brain, and this is what I saw. The brain is mainly composed of two parts. An external part, the cortex, that generates intelligence. The cortex builds cathedrals. The cortex invents cars, produces smartphones, engineers planes. And this part of our brain is recent in our evolution. It appeared later on. But at the very center of our brain, you have this kind of organ, this pink thing here, which is called the striatum. And it's a part of our brain that generates our desires. And by giving us pleasure with a molecule called dopamine. And it drives us to do certain things because of the pleasure that we expect from it. And you see that the striatum lies at the very core of the brain. It means that it was there millions of years before the cortex started developing. It was there in our primate ancestors at the Stone Age. So you have to see this striatum as a kind of the old boss, you know, in a company. He knows how things work. He's got all the connections. He's got the money. He's got dopamine. And the cortex is a kind of a new recruit, you know, the eager new graduate, he will come up with ideas, he's full of energy, but he needs the money, he needs bonuses, he needs dopamine, and the striatum will give him the bonus and dopamine, provided he keeps on producing. So one day the cortex comes in his boss's office and says, what should I do? And the striatum says, Mah, this is your first mission, young boy, I want to get me some food. Yes, because for a company like us, for the brain, you know, food is a key to survival. And I want you to get me some food with no limit. So the cortex says, why with no limit? If you had been hanging around in the savannah for a million of years like me, my young boy, you would know that each time you could catch a prey, you'd better eat as much as possible because you weren't sure to find another prey like this within weeks or months. So do as I say. You're intelligent, you're smart, and I will give you the bonus. Find a solution. I'll give you the shot of dopamine. So the cortex started looking for solutions, and he was really very clever, so he found solutions. He invented tools. He invented the wheel. He invented agriculture, breeding. He invented industrial agriculture, industrial farming, pesticides, 
fertilizers, genetically modified organisms, so that the yields of agriculture started increasing. And the striatum was pleased, and he started eating, and he kept on eating and eating, so that there was an epidemic of obesity, and that the 13% of humans became obese, and that people started dying more of obesity and overweight than of malnutrition and that industrial agriculture accounted for 20% of all greenhouse gas emissions. So the cortex came back into his boss's office and said, are you satisfied? And Australian said, no, I'm not. Now I want sex. And I want sex with no limit. And the cortex was panicked, said, sex with no limit? But isn't it a bit exaggerated? And Australian said, you seem to be the kind of guy who likes to have explanations, so open your ears, I'm going to tell you. You know, I have orders. There is a big board above my head. It's called natural selection. And the orders are clear. I must transmit my genes. I must make more copies of my DNA than my neighbor and my rival. This is the law of the jungle. So go and get me some sex. You're talented, you're gifted, you did well, so continue. I will give you the shot of dopamine. And so the cortex got back to work, and he was much more than clever. He found a solution. He invented the internet, and he invented dating websites and pornographic websites, and the striatum started viewing, viewing 24-7, so that humanity started consuming 136 billion pornographic videos a year which represented 35% of the whole digital content, which accounts for as much as greenhouse gas emissions as the air traffic. So the cortex came once again back in his boss's office and said, now are you satisfied? The striatum said, no I'm not, now I want to be the boss. The cortex was amazed, said, why, did you, why do you want to be the boss? You're already my boss. Why do you want to be the boss? And the striatum said, I have noticed something during all these millions of years spent in the savanna among these groups of hominids on Homo habilis, Homo erectus, and Homo sapiens. I noticed something very interesting is that the more social status you get, the more access you have to food and sex. So I want to be the boss. You did well on your first two missions. Don't disappoint me. You're clever. You're going to find a solution. You're awesome. So do it or I stopped dopamine, so the cortex got back to work, and he invented social media. And people started clicking on buttons to get more likes than their neighbors, to get more likes than their colleagues, their rivals, to get more views, to get more prestige, more friends. And the cortex invented cars with all features with all sorts of gadgets, so that people started buying a new car every two years to get one more gadget than the neighbor to improve their self-esteem and their social status. And the striatum was pleased. But one day, the cortex came back into his office and said, look, we have a problem. Um, we are running out of natural resources. Uh, temperatures are rising, uh, sea levels is rising. Um, Maybe it's time to slow down a little bit. And then suddenly the striatum stared his employee right in the eye and said, you don't seem to realize what it's all about, man. We are not alone. There is competition. If we don't increase production, the others will get the markets and we're going to be fried, you and me. Is that what you want? Uh, no. Is that what you want? So the cortex got back to work. And he increased production. But a few months later, he came a last time into his boss's office and said, um, boss, uh, I have to be frank with you. You know I'm intelligent. Yes, you're very intelligent. You're clever. You're awesome. Your brain volume has never started increasing during all our presence on Earth. So tell me. You know I'm intelligent, so I can read um, scientific data. I can decipher graphs. And now it seems that if we go on like this, in 30 years, we are all going to be dead. And the striatum burst out laughing and said, what did you tell me? In 30 years? You mean 30 years of time? But there is something 
I haven't told you about me. Time is meaningless to me. You're talking to me about the future. You're talking to me about 30 years. And I don't understand these words. I am a deeply rooted dopamine region of the brain, and I don't know what time is. If you want to talk to me about time, you're wasting yours. So just go back to work. You're clever. You're good. And I will give you the shot, the shot of dopamine. I will give you the money, and it will continue, and it will continue, and it will continue. I have won. Game over. So here I am back again, wondering about the origin of the universe. And this morning, in the newspapers, I read a very interesting article about a study carried out at the University of Zurich. In this experiment, people, men and women, were put in an MRI apparatus to measure the brain activity while they were performing a cognitive task. They had to choose between keeping a given amount of money for themselves or sharing it with a total stranger. And scientists observed that men kept the money and that their stridum released dopamine, which was quite logical, but that women tended to share the money and that their stridum released dopamine too. And this was very surprising. This experience, this experiment showed that women can get pleasure, a biochemical pleasure, by giving and by sharing. And the explanation for this in the, in the article was that it was due to education. Because as young girls, from their very childhood, little girls are valued socially and encouraged each time they give, each time they share. And so they are given social status, which is what our striatum wants the most. So what if we could use our dopamine not for ourselves, but for others, not for accumulating things, but to give them? Then we could reconfigure our brains. But we should start at a young age, and with boys, not only with girls, then we could change our brains. And this is not an option. This is a necessity. We don't have another choice. And so, looking back at the origins of the universe and how we were born on this planet and how we are about to destroy it, I'm thinking, if we have a solution and we don't use it, maybe we're not worthy to live in that universe. Thank you for your attention.